Okay, so today we're ready to begin painting our toadstool. And a toadstool is like a garden mushroom. And many of you have probably seen them in Mario. They have them in the Super Mario game. So they're mainly red and white, and that's how people identify and know that it's a toadstool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some tempera paint, and I'm going to hold this in my hand, because then I can turn it when I want to. And I'm gonna paint the top of the mushroom toadstool red, and eventually the little spots will be white. But I'm not going to do the spots while the red paint is wet. And that's kind of similar to when we did the sloth. When wet paint touches wet paint, it can smear. And I'm able to avoid that and have it less likely to happen if I don't do two areas that are right next to each other at the same time. So the nice thing about this tempera paint it's thicker than watercolor paint, and so it looks opaque, which means not see-through, and it also looks very bold. I'm already really happy with the way that color looks on my clay piece. <clears throat> Your clay has been fired through the kiln, and we learned that a kiln is an oven for the clay, and it gets up to 2,000 degrees, and it makes that clay hard and permanent. So at this point, I can hold it and move it around quite a bit without worrying about it too much. When you take it home, you still want to be gentle that you're not bumping into anything, but it's pretty permanent at this point. The paint will sink in quickly, and I'm kind of going over it with a second coat so that it's even bolder, because I really want mine to be bright and stand out. And what we created with our clay is a sculpture. And a sculpture is a three-dimensional piece of art. And so that means that I want to look at it from every side. And all these edges here, I want to paint because they'll be visible. I'll be able to see them when this is sitting in my bedroom or on a shelf in your house. You'll be able to see all the sides. So you want to think about all the sides, all these little edges. And then I can even, oops, let me watch my camera here, hold this upside down, paint some red underneath, because there might be times where that is in view, visible, and then it'll look completed. It won't look like we forgot about that part. I'm slowing down when I get close to uh, the center of the mushroom, this part here because that's going to be white. Traditionally, they're white. And if I'm not careful about my red paint and I get red all over it, it's going to be harder to keep that looking clean white. So I can rotate or turn this in my hand, and I can paint all the underneath part. I probably don't need two layers underneath because it's not the main focus, like the top part is, but I didn't want it to look like it wasn't done. So I'm gonna paint underneath and I keep turning it so that I can get a good reach on what I'm doing. And now I've got my top and my edges and my underside painted red and it looks really awesome. That dried even pretty fast. Just do a quick check for touch up that everything looks bold and dark red without any white spots. Okay, this part we're gonna wait until it dries. Then I'm gonna rinse my paintbrush and I can work on some other parts while I'm waiting. Um, I think right now I'm going to work on the grass down here. Now your area down here, it could be grass or it could be mud or dirt, something earthy since a toadstool is a garden mushroom. But I'm going to go for grass, so I'm going to use some green and I'm going to paint this down here. Again, yours could be brown if you want it to be dirt. Everybody has a different idea of what they want to do. Slow down when you get close to the mushroom here so that you're keeping the paint exactly where you want it to be. We're trying to have control, kind of the older we get. 
And the more we develop our skills and control of our hand, the more precise we can be about things. Keep turning us. And paint your grassy area. Like so. It's kind of interesting that the top part with the red is almost dry already. That's how fast it can go. It just sinks right into the clay. Now your little porcupine, we're going to add one that I bought just because of what we ran into with timing and clay and all that. I'm trying to go around them, but yours will glue right on there, which means that you can actually stick your paintbrush in the hole and try to get the inside. I might work on that later because it's a little bit tricky. I'm trying to do it right now to get around my porcupine. You won't have that issue. So again, with a sculpture, I don't want to leave this white. That doesn't look complete. I want to paint all the parts that are visible. And I want to go ahead and do this edge. Looking good. And keep turning this. Work on these edges. Oop, my lights go out in my room when you don't move. They're on a timer, so I have to move to turn my lights back on. Keep turning your piece in your hand to paint your green or your brown for the earth on the edges. I do not need to paint the bottom because when this sits on a shelf like that, you won't see the bottom, so I don't need to do that. Okay, now, these are gonna dry, and on your next day, we're gonna paint the white and we're gonna paint some details, okay? So, I have one continual video going, and I'm just gonna pick it up where we left off. Make sure when you do your white today that you have a nice clean paintbrush and fresh water. Take your white paint, even sit that down on the table this time. And even though the clay fires white, it'll look a little bit more finished if we put paint on here, like this. And for some reason, sometimes I think this white paint is a little bit see-through. And you might want more than one layer just so it looks like a finished piece. Tilt this and kind of really carefully get your edges. But I don't want to go too close to the red because if I do, this white paint's going to get all over my red. I'd rather stay a little bit away from it. Keep turning and tilting and make your mushroom spots white. By doing that red and white, people know exactly what this is. They don't have to guess what they're looking at because the red and the white is very identifiable. I Many people just know that, that it's a toadstool. Okay. Turning edges carefully. Remember, hold this like a pencil. Slow your hand down like we did with the sloth. Same painting techniques. You have more control. So that's looking really good. I've put two or three coats on. Smooth everything out. Now I want to work on the side because this part is also white. So I'm going to lay this in my hand. And I'm going to begin the white on this part of the mushroom. Probably going to take me some time to get around my windows and my grass and put the more than one layer on. It's going to take a while. I might not even get done all in one class. But if I can at least get one layer and I can continue tomorrow. Try just be dipping into the white paint and then you won't get any pinkish or greenish or anything like that on here. And if you did grass and details, try to carefully go in between as much as you can, careful and slow, so that we leave those ready for another color. 